It's Tuesday, November 9th, and the talk is live. Plus, America's cheapest family. We're actually living the American dream in a very un-American way, without debt. Sharing secrets on how you can cut your grocery bill in half and save $3,000 a year. Let's start talking. We spent $350 a month for groceries, and we paid off our first house in nine years. America's cheapest family. You can have the things in life that you want, but you don't have to go in debt for them. Up next, America's cheapest family. How they live on a grocery budget of only $350 per month. Earlier, we talked about the fact that money is the number one stress of families today. For years, our next guests have been sharing their strategies for saving money, living up to their self-proclaimed title as America's cheapest family. <laughs> they say they can cut your grocery bill in half. Ooh. Please help me welcome Steve and Annette Economides. Welcome to the show. A little bit about yourselves. You have five kids, and I'm told you spend $350 a month on groceries for the seven of you. That's correct. We've been married for 28 years. We have five kids ranging in age from 16 to 27. Three of them still live at home, and we spend $350 a month on groceries, and that includes paper goods, cleaning products, and personal care items. Wow. Food. That's pretty what good. About, uh, oh, yeah. Food. Yeah. 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 Buy some food Food's too. in there too, yeah. You, you say that sticking to a budget is all about planning, all of it. So well, what, what kind of planning do you do before you go to one of these monthly shopping? That's a great favorites? question. Our, um, our book, our grocery book, talks about five steps for planning. And we talk about the first step being planning a menu. A lot of people just, you know, that, that cooking knowledge, that, that planning knowledge has been lost over the generations. And we're talking about... Just a very simple dinner menu, things like barbecue chicken with baked potatoes and green beans and vegetable soup with, with muffins and, and were, tacos. Were you all holding walkie-talkies in the... <laughs> yeah. Who, who, who are you communicating with, each other? We're, we're talking to each other. I do the outer loop, you know, the dairy, the produce, and the bakery. And Annette does the inner aisles. And basically, we go shopping once a month. And we want to use our time as efficiently as possible. And so we're in, we're not hunt, we're, we're not, we're not browsing or grazing, we're right. hunting. You, yeah, you're We're in to mission. get in, get out, and get done. Because we don't want to spend our time doing that. And, and the walkie-talkies came about because he, before we started our business and he was working, you know, as an account exec, he would come home dead tired. And the way I could get him to grocery shop once a month on a Friday night was to make a game out of it. <laughs> and you know how guys are with those electronic gizmos? Oh, they're so, there. So we <laughs> bought the walkie-talkies, and then he wouldn't have to come looking for me to figure out if something was a good deal. Yeah. He could just beam me up on the walkie-talkies. It's, it's teamwork. It's yeah. working together. It's, I value Annette. When, when we first got married, she didn't know how to cook. She knew how to boil water and scramble eggs. And she made it her goal to be excellent at what she does. And she is. She can cook over 100 meals. It's amazing what happens when you have a desire to really improve. All right. That's what our book is about. So take us through your strategy. Once you get to the grocery store, what do you look for at the grocery store? You look for things that are on sale. You want to look at the sale flyers to stock up on the things that are on sale. You want to look for overstock items. You want to look for clearance items. And yes, they do have clearance items at the grocery store. And you also want to look at your list. You don't ever want to go to the store without a list. And we've seen some of the lists that, well, I don't know who uses them, but little napkins, little post-it pads, that's not a list. We have a list on our website. You've got to have a sophisticated, detailed list. So you go in with a plan. Otherwise, your plan will be thrown away, and you'll go to the plan that the grocer has, which is for you to pick up impulse buys. And they expect that you're going to put... For every 10 items you put in your cart, you're going to pick up six items that you didn't plan on buying. Hmm. And that's where most people destroy their budgets. One of my biggest 
I cannot delegate my grocery shopping. I can't ask anybody else to do it because they do it all wrong and I get mad. <laughs> One of the things that I do or don't do when I go to the grocery store is go there on an empty stomach. Mm -hmm. Is that a good tip? That's because a great yeah. if you go there hungry, don't you buy more? Absolutely. And things you don't need? Donuts yes, you need donuts. yes. That's, that's been a proven fact. And <laughs> obviously cooking at home saves a lot of money. So any good cooking tips that you can give well, what I, what I would say to folks is if you're eating out every, it, take baby steps. If you're eating out for every meal, then start maybe perhaps picking up prepared foods at the grocery store so that you're eating at home maybe three or four days a week. Take gradual steps. Cooking is another great thing. Cook double. Whenever you cook something, cook double. Yes, yeah. Use one thing like, say you, you brown ground beef. Use it in tacos, spaghetti sauce, sloppy joes. Think in, in ways of multiplying your time, and you will also multiply your dollars. All right, we're going to have more money-saving tips from America's cheapest family when we come back. Economides, also known as America's Cheapest Family, and you're teaching us how to save money at the grocery store. We have two bags of carrots. Steve, why? Well, anytime you can get away from prepared foods, you're going to save big. How much do you think? I think you could probably save about 300% if you put away the prepared carrots and you buy as, as natural as you can. 300%. Staying away from prepared foods. So peel it and cut it up yourself. That's Absolutely. Right. Okay, lunch meats. What do we have here? Well, there's three different ways to, three different levels of lunch meat. You can go to the deli where you spend $11.99 a pound, or you can go to the deli wall where you're going to spend, I don't know, $5 to five $7 to six dollars dollars a pound. Yeah. Or you can go to the meat section and buy a chub of meat and ask the deli or the butcher to slice it, and you're gonna save 50 to 75% on your lunch meat bill. That's amazing. Like that. I never thought to do that. All right, Holly's got some stuff. Yeah, okay, so produce is always an issue in my house, and my husband will buy two big things of ripe bananas, <laughs> and I keep telling him buy one that's not ripe. And the, right? Am I right? Yeah, yes, you are. A lot of people think that you can't. You'd have to eat cheap to eat healthy. I mean, how, how do you okay, do that? When we go shopping once a month, we buy tons of fruit and veggies. But what we do is we buy it smart. So we'll take the bananas, we'll take grapes and strawberries. Those don't last a long time, so we'll eat those in the first week. Then we'll save the harder fruits for later on in the month. So apples and pears and oranges can last three, four, five weeks. So you eat your fruit in the right order. And what, those bananas? Yeah. If you buys too many? Yeah. Make banana bread. Banana bread. Put it in the freezer. Need a recipe for that. Yeah, exactly. Well, come on over here. Okay, so finally, kid snacks. Big thing in our house. Every every uh, everything comes in these kid friendly sizes, and our right. children want them. How do we save on these? Well, these are easy, but they're very expensive. Right. And so, if you can buy your bags like this, and it's a great activity to get your kids involved, and then have them portion that out into zippered bags once a week, then when it's time for their school lunches, they just grab a zippered bag with an individual portion, and well, you're going to you go. save 50%. I'm just adding that my kids have trash-free lunches, so they just do that, but in a container, and they save money on the well, bag. There you go. Right? That's a good That's way right. to do it, okay. too. Okay, I think we have some audience questions, correct? Where's our Leah in the audience? Leah, where are you, darling? Oh, sorry, we were talking about perfume. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> she you're said also, I smell good. You have a question. Yes, how do you avoid impulse buying at the grocery store? That's a great question. We had a reader to our website give us a great tip. She said she takes a hand basket, she puts it in the seat of her grocery cart, and anytime she's picking up something that is not on her list, it goes into that hand basket. And like Steve said earlier, um, grocers are counting on 60% of your items being impulse buys. So if you want to get a handle on what you're doing with your impulse buys, try that little trick, and then you can decide what you want to put back on the shelf and what you actually want to pay for. Good one. Okay. Good one. I try to buy organic, but it gets expensive. Do you have any money-saving tips for buying organic? Sure. Don't buy it. No. <laughs> no. Hey, how, about, how about this? Number one, grow some of your own food. A garden is a great way to save money and you know what's going in the ground. The second way is to do some research and understand that your organic dollars can be better spent on things that need to be bought organic. So in other words, fruits and veggies with thick skins 
have less pests that can penetrate them so they don't use pesticides on them. So things like pineapple, uh, papaya, avocado, uh, all those kiwi, those kind of fruits, don't spend your organic dollars on that. Save that for your meat and other vegetables like um, strawberries and grapes and things like that that are, are more susceptible. Um, also, broccoli and asparagus are pest resistant so they don't use pesticides on them. So what? don't buy organic broccoli and is that what you're saying? Right. Be it, smart. Right. The Consumer Reports and Mayo Clinic did a study on it and that's where we got our information from and I'm telling and you, if you do your book. research, you'll, you'll be good. It is in our book. We have time for one more quick question. Uh, do you use coupons and are they worth the effort for you? We actually do use coupons, but that isn't our main strategy. Our shopping chapter alone has 17 strategies for saving. So coupons can save you money, but there's so many more strategies and, out there that and, you can implement. Honestly, a lot of people don't have time for coupons. And that's why we wrote the rest of the book, because there are hundreds of ways to save. And especially if you're a working mom, you know, maybe that's not where you start. But cooking at home, shopping smarter, making a plan, those are all going to save you a ton of money. All right, you've been hearing them talk about their book. Steve and Annette's newest book, Cut Your Grocery Bill in Half, is in stores now. Everyone in the audience is getting a copy. Yeah. Now that you know how to buy groceries for less, you'll need an easy way to cook them. That's why everyone in the audience is going home with a George Foreman Evolve Grill. You can grill